Good evening to our Japanese audience and good morning to the European crowd. I'm Yudhita Reka Magyar, country representative of Eurocast Japan. A very warm welcome to you and uh, a special greeting to our speakers today, um, Professor Kristin Kaff, Professor Teodora Kirova, and Professor Mania Diaz Rodriguez. I'd like to greet my colleague Tatsuya Maisava in Kobe as well. Today's MSC Staff Exchanges webinar is um, a webinar within the Horizon Europe program, and we promote collaboration and knowledge transfer by facilitating a temporary exchange of staff between organizations. This webinar is for organizations and institutions in Japan uh, who would like to participate in the staff exchange program and individuals who would like to assist their organizations with that. It brings multiple benefits and it enables cross-border collaboration and the fostering of international research partnerships and the sharing of expertise. So what can you learn about today? Well, you'll hear about the application process, the eligibility criteria, funding details, success stories from past and present participants. Uh, so let's have a look at what today's program shall bring. And I would like to invite our first speaker for today, Professor Kristin Kaff, Deputy Head at the International Research Cooperation Department at the Estonian Research Council. Thank you very much for this very kind in, uh, invitation and introduction. And I'm especially pleased to uh, talk to the Japanese audience today about the Marie Skorowska Curie Staff Exchanges Scheme, because it's one of the best ways uh, to foster collaboration between Japanese and European uh, research organizations. The MSCA staff exchanges are part of the big MSCA family of uh, research mobility actions, which is in turn um, a part of the Horizon Europe framework program. And I will start my uh, presentation by giving you a little bit of background about Horizon Europe. I will speak what are the Marie Skodowska Curie actions. And then I will concentrate on the Marie Skodowska Curie staff exchanges scheme in particular. Um, and I will also present a lot of useful links to you uh, if you are interested in um, starting uh, to prepare this um, application. So Horizon Europe is um, the biggest in the world international research program. It has um, a budget of around 100 billion euros. And um, it is a program uh, to implement the um, research policy of the European Union. It is done so uh, with um, different schemes. The structure of Horizon Europe is quite complicated. We will today look at pillar one, which is called excellent science. But uh, the uh, whole of the program is focusing on um, delivering um, research results that will help uh, the world and Europe uh, to fulfill its goals and um, promote excellent science and cooperation between excellent institutions globally. The um, excellent science pillar uh, is uh, quite specific in Horizon Europe in the sense that while other parts of Horizon Europe usually contain uh, calls for applications that are, have top-down scientific priorities, then the uh, excellent science pillar is a bottom-up uh, program. It uh, consists of the prestigious European uh, Research Council grants, then the Marie Skodowska Curie Actions, which is the topic for today, and also the research infrastructure. Coming to Marie Skodowska Curie Actions, we find here uh, several different schemes Today we will uh, concentrate on staff exchanges scheme, but there are also postdoctoral fellowships uh, that enable individual researchers to carry out their research projects wherever in the world. There are also doctoral networks, which bring together entities that are interested in providing high quality doctoral training. Uh, these can also include uh, entities from Japan. Staff exchanges schemes, which is the most international scheme um, in the whole of Horizon Europe, because its goal is to promote cooperation of research entities uh, in Europe and of other uh, elsewhere in the world. 
co-fund program, which is uh, co-funding a uh, regional, national or international doctoral or postdoctoral program. And finally, uh, MSEA and Citizens, which funds uh, public awareness of research. All of these uh, Maurice Gorosuke reactions have common features. Uh, they are focused on providing excellent conditions for researchers to develop their skills and knowledge. They uh, are all focused on mobility of researchers. So all of these actions and um, the staff exchanges is no exception, focus on researchers moving from one country to another to fulfill their um, research projects. There is a very strong collaboration between the academic and non-academic section. And with a non-academic section, we mean mostly um, companies, um, industry, uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, but not only because uh, MSCA strives to include also public administration or other types of entities that are um, um, participating in uh, research activities and uh, um, who are future employers of researchers. And uh, finally, um, the MSCA uh, really uh, are focused on bringing impacts uh, both for research and for researchers uh, for in, uh, in increasing their career possibilities after their grant. The um, collaboration projects within the MSEA um, invite organizations who want to work together on a research project. And uh, these uh, collaboration projects, uh, including staff exchanges, um, are really uh, excellent means of uh, developing research strands that are really at the heart of the researchers who want to participate. Because of its bottom-up nature, researchers can come up with their own research idea. And uh, via this collaboration of different types of organizations in different parts of, of the world, they can um, foster the culture of excellence and um, boost their uh, research and innovation capacity. So the uh, collaboration projects, they enable um, different um, setups, different, uh, um, different setups of uh, consortia who can uh, take part. And I will illustrate this a little bit later with uh, examples from real life uh, staff exchanges projects. The uh, collaboration projects, uh, the participants there are organizations, but of course the real participants are researchers, the researchers who are taking part of these programs and who are actually physically working on the research and also undertaking the mobility. And uh, the program is open to all uh, career stages of researchers. So in MSCA staff exchanges, for example, um, Participants uh, can be uh, starting from uh, doctoral students, but also technicians who are um, actively involved in research activities, um, more experienced researchers, postdocs, up to uh, their most experienced professors who can uh, all participate in these actions. The MSCA um, actions, all of them, but most particularly staff exchanges, they uh, focus on the collaboration of the uh, academic and non-academic sector and also the what is called the triple i dimension of their program so that three i's are international and when um, in the european context we use this word international it means um, collaboration between uh, countries and entities in Europe and countries and entities outside of the European Union and associated countries. The second I is intersectoral, so different sectors, and uh, thirdly, interdisciplinary. So all of these uh, elements are present in the staff exchanges program. Now coming to the uh, staff exchanges in particular, why are we talking about this uh, 
uh, program at the moment. It is uh, because the call is currently open and there is still enough time to find partners in Europe and uh, prepare an excellent proposal that um, has high chances of, of getting funded. The call for applications was open on 5th of October. It is currently open. And the deadline for submitting applications is on the 28th of February 2024, not 23, that I have uh, mistakenly written here on my slide. So um, the call page in the funding and tenders portal of the European Union contains all necessary information. It has all the background documents, all the requirements, all the explanations about how this uh, program works and what are the financial and other implications. And also it contains the link to the sub uh, submission system and uh, the proposal template that you have to fill in when you are going to apply. The application is done together uh, with a whole consortium. Um, there is uh, one organization that must be established in Europe that will be uh, the coordinator of this consortium. But the um, contributions from all partners um, will be included and will form one coherent work plan and justification for that work plan. So what are the main features of the staff exchanges scheme? The main, the main goal of the scheme is to strengthen interaction and cooperation between uh, the academic and non-academic se sector, but also, and this is the maybe the most important part of today's um, focus, between Europe and other countries. In Europe, we use the term third countries to refer to any countries that are not in the European Union. So that is the um, European term for any country in the world. And of course, Japan would be one of the um, most sought after partners uh, in these staff exchanges because of the high quality of research and the potential to create very uh, interesting uh, research collaboration. So uh, the staff exchanges, uh, the goal is to um, fulfill a research project that is of common interest to all the partners in the consortium. And uh, there will be uh, this research project um, will be in implemented via staff exchanges, as the name says. So researchers, other staff will move from one country to another uh, to fulfill this, uh, this project. There is uh, a specific condition in the staff exchanges that the um, staff exchanges have to be either between Europe and non-European countries, so Japan and any uh, country in the Europe that is participating in the consortium, or if they are take place uh, within Europe, they have to be uh, between different sectors. So, for example, from a company to a university or vice versa. The project can focus on one or the other or both types of these kind of collaborations. So a project could have both international collaboration, meaning secondments between Europe and other countries, or it could have um, intersectoral collaboration, meaning cooperation between different sectors, or it can combine both of these. It can have uh, both intersectoral and international secondments uh, included in the program. The um, Intersectoral secondments are, of course, also allowed between Europe and non-European countries. So uh, between Japan and Europe, all types of secondments are uh, most welcome in this project. The duration of these projects uh, is up to four years. Usually people apply for four years because uh, uh, such international and intersectoral uh, cooperation needs some time to set uh, to be set up, etc. And um, the size of the project is uh, measured in person months, because the basis of the funding and the basis of the implementation of these projects are the secondments. So the person months refer to the number of uh, secondments in this project. So most importantly, the collaborating uh, partners will implement a joint research and innovation project. 
and they will do so via these secondments, sending their staff from one country or from one institution to another. And in addition to these, there will be probably a joint events such as networking activities, workshops, maybe uh, trainings if younger researchers are involved, conferences, etc. And the focus in the project, in addition to the implementation of the research and innovation projects, should also to providing new skills to the participating researchers. So new skills uh, and career development opportunities, mentoring of younger colleagues, etc. Eligible staff are your own staff members, so people who work already in your institution. As I said, they can be of any career stage. And uh, this uh, person who will be seconded has to be someone who has already been working in your institution for at least one month. So they have had time to um, integrate into your um, organization and will go on a secondment, then return to your organization and will um, implement the uh, knowledge that they gained or the connections that they, they made in your organization. Each uh, staff member can be sent to a shorter or a longer secondment. So the shortest uh, term uh, is one month, so, but it can also be split into several parts. So for example, if a um, very busy a senior professor is not able to uh, be away from their um, institution for a full month, they can do, for example, two, uh, two week secondments. And the longest time for one uh, work, uh, staff member is uh, 12 months. So up to 12 months is the maximum duration of a secondment. And during the secondment, the staff member has to be involved full time in the activities of the project. So uh, the consortium usually consists of uh, many organizations. In Horizon Europe, the minimum is at least three legal entities in at least three different countries, two of which must be European countries. But usually the number of consortium in uh, uh, the number of organizations in a consortium in a staff exchanges project is actually uh, much larger. So the average number is 11 and you can find both smaller and larger uh, number of organizations in a consortium. It depends very much on what is the goal of their project and what are the, um, the activities that they uh, need to um, fill in. So normally I would advise uh, to go uh, between, uh, uh, let's say, the six and, and 15 uh, members of the consortium. And each or uh, organization in the consortium can both send uh, their uh, staff and also receive staff, depending on the needs, on the type of the organization, and on the specific specificities of the uh, collaboration that they plan to do together. I have um, included here a link to a database of the European Union that has all funded projects uh, from Horizon Europe, and including a Marie Skrovska Cree and staff exchanges. And I searched for all the currently funded projects uh, that include uh, Japan. And there, were, there are actually 16 uh, staff exchanges projects that are either running now or about to start uh, very soon. And I have included here some examples uh, for you to, to have a look at. I also uh, had a look at the topics of these projects. We will hear uh, later today uh, two very good examples of um, uh, staff exchanges projects, including Japanese participants. But uh, the topics really were um, all over the place, uh, starting from uh, public administration, going to nanomaterials, a lot of energy projects, uh, but also projects uh, about uh, um, data mining, machine learning, DNA, etc. Uh, this is the beauty of the MSCA, that the topic is freely to be chosen by the consortium. There are no priorities, so it really is the uh, interests of the organizations and the researchers themselves that prevail in, in these projects. 
some examples of uh, existing projects to show you how the consortia can be uh, set up and uh, what kind of secondments will happen. So this is an example of a project that has a number of participants from mostly the southern part of Europe, uh, then uh, from uh, uh, Africa and from the United States. And there uh, are uh, both academic and non-academic uh, participants. And you can see uh, the arrows here, the planned secondments. So the secondments can be between uh, Europe and non-European countries, but also between um, different types of organizations within uh, Europe. This is uh, an example of a more um, intersectoral projects where the uh, uh, secondments happen between uh, academic and non-academic institutions uh, in Europe. And this is an example again of a collaboration uh, project that involves uh, United States on the one hand and then several different players from Europe. And when you go to the uh, links later on when you receive the slides and look at the 16 examples of Japanese uh, uh, projects, then you will be able to see all the full list of participants, which countries are involved and uh, what is the goal and the topic of these projects. Now, uh, coming to the funding of these projects. And the funding is concentrating on uh, funding secondments. But uh, as in the other parts of Horizon Europe, uh, the uh, Japan is most welcome to participate in these consortia, but with own funding. So sending European researchers to Japan will be a cost, eligible cost in the project. But sending Japanese researchers uh, to uh, Europe will, uh, the Japanese institutions will have to find own funding. And I hope that uh, during this uh, uh, webinar, we will hear for some examples of where the own funding comes from. Um, it can be a different grant, it can be an own uh, funding source. Uh, it depends really on uh, the resources of the in participating institution. So um, the funding available for the uh, from the project to the European participants and, for example, to, to sending uh, research staff from Europe to Japan is uh, based on unit costs. The unit costs are calculated for one month. So if there are shorter or longer uh, secondments, it will be pro rata. So uh, depend depending on the actual length, uh, length of the secondment. And uh, the unit costs uh, are based on the principle that the salary of the researcher or the staff member will be uh, paid from other sources. So the uh, uh, staff member will remain um, a staff member also during the secondment. Their salary will be um, continued as normal, but these unit costs will cover the additional costs related to the implementation of the project. So first of all, there is a, an allowance which covers the travel costs. So this is uh, fixed at uh, 2,300 euros per month. Then there, um, in case uh, the researcher has a special needs, uh, they can apply also for uh, a special needs allowance to help also researchers that would be otherwise um, not at it at an advantageous position uh, because of their physical disabilities, for example, to, to, to undertake mobility. So this is a, um, a special nod to these researchers who uh, otherwise would be in difficulties. And uh, there are also uh, what are called institutional unit costs. These are the uh, costs that are meant for the organizations and for their research project and for all the events um, and other uh, joint uh, undertakings of the consortium. So the 1,300 euros per month per secondment is meant for uh, funding any research costs, but also any events that the consortium uh, will organize. And uh, then the management and indirect contribution is calculated at 1,000 euros per uh, month. So altogether, um, it is two times 2,300 euros. 
one, one part is meant for the researcher to cover, cover the travel costs, and the other part is uh, meant for the organizations and the research project. The uh, call, as we mentioned, is currently open. Uh, the uh, call will close on the 28th of February, so the uh, results will be known uh, more or less um, in five months after the uh, call deadline. So in summer uh, 2024, we will uh, hear um, the results of the 2023 call, and you you can also see that there is a next call, 2024 call, that will have more or less the same uh, schedule. So uh, if right now is uh, too fast uh, to create a, a good consortium, you can always opt for the next year. And uh, they, there will be calls every year similar to this. So some minor details might change, but uh, in principle, the call will remain the same. And uh, you can also, um, in case your initial proposal is, is not successful, you can amend it and apply again next year. At the same time, it is uh, my pleasure to, to tell you that the staff exchanges call is really uh, has one of the highest success rates in Horizon Europe. So last year, uh, the success rate was uh, roughly 35%, which is um, uh, very much higher than uh, that is uh, uh, common in Horizon Europe. So uh, more than a third of the projects that were submitted were also funded. So I think that is very good uh, news for everybody who is going to apply for this uh, application, uh, this grant. Um, having uh, given you an overview of uh, the uh, uh, staff exchanges uh, call and uh, the goals of, of this instrument, I would now like to uh, inform you of some events that will take place very soon to help you uh, start writing your proposal and also some materials that are available. I will first um, tell you that uh, the European Commission itself has, um, that is uh, managing the Horizon Europe uh, program and all the grants has uh, a really a very uh, wealthy library of useful documents. Uh, the documents are all available from the call page that is currently open, but you can also go to directly to the um, website of the Marie Skorowska Curie Actions, uh, and you will find there uh, lots of um, useful materials that are the legal official uh, European Commission documents. But in addition, uh, we, the national contact points for this program in different EU countries, we have come together under the project called MSCA Net, that uh, you see the logo of this project on the top of my slides. And we have also come together and created additional documents that are not official uh, legal documents of the European Commission, but are there to help all applicants to apply for these actions. And um, I must say that uh, these documents are very highly appreciated by all of the participating researchers and um, institutions. So I would highly recommend you to also use them. And the, let's say the flagship document of our uh, creation is the MSCA handbook. And there is a handbook for staff exchanges available. And it is in its essence, it's like a, com a commentary uh, to the um, proposal template. So you have the proposal template that tells you, uh, that has all the instructions, how to uh, uh, write uh, an application. And uh, the handbook complements this uh, proposal template by giving uh, tips and tricks and resources and uh, um, uh, hints on how the evaluators at previous calls have, uh, what they have um, commented on, on previous applications. We also organize uh, webinars, uh, we provide uh, statistics, uh, so you can uh, go to the website of the MSCA net and uh, you will find there lots of different information. So this, um, um, the first event that I'm going to promote today, and I hope that many of you will attend, there is still time, the event will take place as soon as tomorrow. <laughs> but the registration is still open. 
because I talked to the organizers and mentioned this info day today, and uh, I asked them to extend the um, registration deadline so that if you register right after this webinar, you will be still be able to to attend the event. So for the first time in uh, uh, we uh, the NCPs we are organizing a staff exchanges brokerage event. So an event meant for organizations looking for partners to write and um, this application with. So what you need to do is you need to register. You can see already what uh, organizations and which uh, uh, countries have um, registered already. And uh, to uh, participate, uh, sorry, I was uh, too fast. You have to um, also fill in your proposal uh, to the uh, um, brokerage event in the marketplace. We are using the B2Match uh, platform for this brokerage event. Uh, many researchers and uh, uh, other organizations are familiar with this. So to, your registration is very easy. And the contacts will also remain open after this brokerage event tomorrow. Uh, so uh, you can still browse and ma uh, make contacts even after the event. Another event that will also happen soon that is uh, very useful uh, for the preparation of these uh, grants is the European Commission's info session on this uh, action. So they, there will be a um, Merskotovska Reaction Staff Exchanges info, info session um, organized by the European Commission on uh, Friday, the 8th of December. It will, it will start at 10 o'clock Central European time so it is one hour later than today's webinar, uh, hopefully still uh, acceptable timing for, uh, for Japan. Um, yeah, this is the slide that I was looking for uh, earlier. Uh, so it uh, explains how, to, how you can uh, use the uh, B2Match platform by uploading your interest in the um, marketplace section of the uh, platform. So um, coming back to the what the MSCA Net is offering to you, uh, we have uh, information packs uh, for all types of uh, Mariskodovsky reactions. So today we are talking about staff exchanges, but maybe uh, in the spring you were, might be interested in the uh, postdoctoral fellowships and in the autumn in the doctoral networks. You will find the same information packs there. And you will find for staff exchanges in particular, you will find the staff exchanges handbook. You will find an evolution guide that explains how the, uh, the, the statistics, for example, etc. And you will find additional documents that will help you to prepare a high quality application for this um, instrument. And uh, I will um, finish my talk with uh, a with, uh, uh, fun activity that you can take after this info day. Uh, we have also provided uh, for the applicants um, a self-assessment tool that you, everybody can use to test their knowledge of the uh, staff exchanges and other MSCA schemes. So if you're interested in uh, testing, if you have understood everything uh, correctly after the info days, etc., you can go there and you can uh, test yourself with a uh, uh, questions so you can play this game of of MSCA and with this I conclude my presentation and I know that afterwards we will have uh, plenty of time for questions as well so I will be very happy to answer any if you have. Thank you so much Kristin for the great presentation and indeed um, there are events upcoming uh, the first one tomorrow as was mentioned, and the next one, the 8th of December. So please keep this uh, date in mind. Uh, so many pieces of information. Uh, the recording will be available later. So you haven't missed anything. If you could tune in later, I see that some attendees arrived a bit um, uh, later than when we started the webinar. So please do not worry. The recording will be available, and you can re-listen to what Kristen has said about the application process. Thank you so much. Coming up in our program is an introduction of a project, an MSCA staff exchange project to Dynamo, bridging scientists in quantum optics across the globe. 
And our speaker is Salvador Kirova, Senior Researcher, Project Coordinator at the University of Latvia. Um, yeah, hello everyone. And um, thank you, Judith, for inviting me to give this presentation on our project, since uh, it involves um, two partners from Japan. So it is exactly on the topic of uh, your access to Japan. Um, so, um, uh, the coordinator of our project is um, Lat University of Latvia, and um, I'm the coordinator from uh, Institute of Atomics, Physics, and Spectroscopy. Uh, so what is our project about? First of all, uh, it hasn't started yet. It will start in January next year. So we applied in March this year. In um, in the summer, we got the good results, and um, after that, we prepared all the documents for the grant agreement, and the project will start in January next year. Uh, so, QDynamos uh, stands for um, Quantum Control of... I cannot see my own screen. <laughs> um, so you can see on the screen where it starts from. Basically, we will um, work with um, quantum control of molecular and optical processes in, in different uh, systems. Uh, here is a small uh, representation of uh, papers published by all the consortium partners. Uh, the point is that we have a joint experimental and theoretical effort um, between all the partners to conduct state-of-art research in uh, novel quantum control protocols and development of schemes for quantum control in different media, so um, thermal atoms and molecules or ultra cold chemical reactions or uh, Rydberg atoms, um, Rydberg ion molecules, and also um, uh, atoms and molecules in cavities and nanofibers. Uh, this is on the research part. Uh, on the training part, um, our aim to, is to provide uh, high quality training for the early stage researchers in different approach of theoretical and experimental physics and quantum optics, and also um, to have a very active transfer, transfer of knowledge during uh, the plant second months from the experts uh, in these fields to young participants. Um, also, um, the project was based on some collaboration that already existed and also creating new collaborations. So this will be reinforced during the second months and the joint um, activities. And of course, to communicate and disseminate our research, not only to the scientific community, but also to the general public. Uh, and even though our project is mostly research-based, we don't have any industry partners as um, uh, within the consortium, but we always plan to um, think about future applications and maybe even to contact some uh, industrial partners in the future for, for, the, uh, for the cooperation. Uh, so the consortium uh, is uh, um, from 10 partners. We have uh, four from Europe and the rest are from outside of Europe, so associated partners. Uh, we have University of Latvia, which is the coordinator, and we are a theoretical group that will be working uh, in this project. Then we have University of Parma, also theory. University of Pizza will be um, uh, on the experimental part. Um, University of uh, Ulm in Germany also, experimental lab. From the associated partners, um, we have three partners in the States, uh, Temple University uh, with the experimental lab on quantum optics, uh, University of Michigan, also on Rayburg Physics, um, GILA, together with University of Colorado, theoretical physics on quant uh, on code atoms and molecules. Uh, we have one partner from New Zealand, uh, which de uh, we deal with experiments uh, on uh, code atoms. And we have two partners from Japan. This is Tokyo University of Science. Um, and University of Electrocommunications, and we have both experimental partners from there. So you see that it's a good um, match between theory and experiment. And also we have a really good um, gender uh, sort of balance because um, the names in red are you know, female researchers. So we have three female leaders in this consortium. 
Um, so let me introduce you to our um, partners in Japan. First of all, how did we get to work with them? How did we uh, start this uh, cooperation for, from the point of view of writing the project? Um, one of our partners in Euro University of Parma, um, he already had some um, joint publications with uh, Mark uh, Sadbrov from Tuck University. So we decided to um, invite him also um, in this uh, project writing. And thankfully uh, it was successful. So, and uh, Mark on his side, he knew um, Kali, who is also working on similar topics. So we invited Kali also. And uh, this is how we uh, have involvement of two um, Japanese partners. So Tokyo University of Science is um, one of the oldest private universities. Um, it has about 20,000 students and uh, 2,000 faculty members. Uh, a lot of laboratories and um, really active in research um, with a really good uh, placement success rate after graduation. And is also very active in astrophysics and um, uh, superconducting uh, research. Um, on the other hand, the University of Electrocommunications is very um, engineering and applied oriented. It has about 500 faculties and uh, 3,500 students. Mm, the research is uh, focused on physics, material science, life sciences, robotics, mechanical engineering. Uh, and it uh, also is very active when it comes to technology and development into susta uh, for sustainability. Um, and um, for them, it's really also important the cooperation with industry and um, diversity and gender equality. So um, from the Tokyo University of Science, we have the Nanotransport Lab uh, with um, Mark Sadgrove. Um, so the lab is equipped with um, different um, uh, different um, equipment for single photo generation, particle manipulation, uh, scanning electron microscopes, optical fibers, um, laser cooling equipment, and mechanical workshops. And um, the topic of uh, their research is uh, how to control the motion of atoms on a nanoscale uh, using coupling of light and uh, nanostructures. And um, they will be active in uh, some of the work packages in our project, um, namely quantum control of, of atoms um, in optical fibers. Our next, um, oh, so here is Mark with uh, his students. Uh, happy about graduating this year. Um, our next partner from Japan is um, 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 the laboratory of um, Kali Nayak uh, in also in Tokyo. Uh, the the key topic of uh, of their research is also. Uh, control of atoms and engineering of different kind of interactions, atom, 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 photon, um, coupling to uh, laser, uh, coupling to optical nanofibers, uh, and also the ultimate uh, the ultimate goal will be to create building, building blocks for quantum proce processors, and so in this um, uh, in this uh, case we have more of a um, um, oriented towards applications and maybe even industry in the future. So uh, here is uh, Kali with his students and um, his optical nano photonics lab. So it's not only work, it's also fun activities in the group. Uh, shortly about the activities that we plan within our projects. So um, the funding that we got is 4, 000, about 4,000 euros. We have uh, secondments 118 planned altogether, 88 by the European partners, the re, um, we, which are the ones that are funded by um, Horizon Europe. The rest, um, as um, was mentioned before, um, will be funded by um, the third country partners by, by their own funding, including Japan. Our Japanese colleagues will be visiting us on, on their own projects. So the total, as far as I remember, 
um, secondments to Japan from Europe is about 21, and then from Japan to Europe is nine. So we have a couple of work packages. Uh, the first three work packages are concentrated on research, um, which we already talked about, about um, theoretical and experimental quantum control schemes in, in different media. Um, the work package four is, co is concerned about training. So we want to train our early stage researchers in difficult quantum, uh, quantum optics approaches. And um, of course this will happen um, during transfer of knowledge in the second months, but also we plan to organize um, different summer schools. So every year, one well, summer school for the early stage researchers. So they can also exchange between themselves um, the knowledge that they have gained during the second months. And also we will have a focus on the complementary skills. We will teach them how to plan their research, how to present their results, uh, how to communicate with different partners. And also, of course, how to experience different cultures, because as you saw, uh, we are really expanded around the globe. We have Europe, um, New Zealand, um, Asia, America. So um, we'll work together on these um, topics of quantum optics. Finally, in dissemination management, um, we will be, of course, making our own web page for our project uh, on social media. We will try to invite some um, TV and uh, radio programs so we can give interviews. Also, University of Latvia every year organizes scientific night, uh, which is focused on uh, visits by the uh, general public and especially high school students. We will try to show them what it means to be a researcher and uh, try to motivate them to also uh, take the path of um, research and uh, development in, in Latvia. Also, we plan, uh, besides the four annual workshops for the early stage researchers, we plan to have two workshops um, for all the participants, experienced and young researchers. The second year, it will be in Latvia, and the final year of the project, it will be in Italy. And so uh, we already have information about our project on the CORDIS webpage. Uh, we are currently working on developing our own web page at the University of Latvia, and here is the contacts of our project. Um, the coordinator, Dina, is our administrative manager, and Inga is our institute director. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, I'll be staying also for the questions and answers um, after all the presentations, so you're welcome. Thank you. Again, a wealth of uh, information was communicated to our audience about the project. And if you would like to learn more, uh, please visit the QDynamo webpage. I actually linked it to the poster today. So you can find information about both projects that are being shared. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to encourage our audience to post their questions in the Q&A box here in Zoom, and uh, they will be answered uh, definitely in the next uh, uh, few minutes. So please stay with us and post your questions in the Q&A box. Our final presentation for today is about MSC Staff Exchange Evolved Electric Vehicles Point Location Optimization via Vehicular Communications, presented by uh, Professor Manuel Diaz Rodriguez, Project Coordinator at IT Software, Universidad de Malaga. Thanks a lot for inviting me to, to this uh, short conference. And I, I will talk a little bit about this project. It's, uh, it has been running for nearly one year now, uh, and, and now in Japan, and, and with another colleague that is here in, uh, with, since uh, September. And it's been very, uh, a very fruit, fruitful uh uh, visit. Um, I will talk a little bit about about the the project. Um, the project is uh, uh, is in the energy sector. Uh, as you know, the greenhouse uh, gas emissions uh, are really important for the European Union and all over the world. And uh, we in, in Europe, we are. Uh, 
trying to reduce the, these uh, uh, em emissions uh, in the different sectors. And we, we have uh, some success in industry, but in the case of uh, transport, uh, the success is limited. Um, if we see to, to the data, uh, the data is, uh, look at the data, uh, we see that road transport is especially the, the main uh, source of these uh, uh, CO2 emissions. And, and, uh, and we are in a, in a situation where we have to reduce that um, uh, from, from the point of view of, of the European Union, one of the uh, most uh, important uh, uh, tries is uh, uh, electric vehicle. Uh, the, in, in the case of electric vehicle, the European Union is uh, uh, one of the major players as it is expected to become even bigger uh, in the next uh, years, uh, right uh, right now, I think it, we we are just uh, below uh, uh, China, but uh, probably uh, will be uh, it is expected to have even more electric vehicles on China in twenty twenty six. But uh, uh, there are many challenges to be solved. Uh, from the research point of view for, for dealing with the uh, electric vehicles. Even if we have many in our streets, uh, there are many uh, things that have to be solved uh, uh, before uh, having a, a, a real uh, impact in, the, in, the, in, in transport uh, in, in all over Europe. First, uh, uh, the, from those challenges uh, in our project, we are going to deal with vehicle to infrastructure and vehicle to vehicle connectivity. We are also uh, going to deal with security and privacy uh, from the data that we are go we need for 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 the planning of the charging uh, and for the uh, vehicle to vehicle connectivity and. Another important part is uh, the integration of the uh, vehicles in the smart grid. Uh, uh, vehicles that have to be charged, and this is going uh, to suppose an important uh, consumption increment. And this consumption increment have to be foresee, uh, and we need uh, predictive models to adapt our uh, smart grid for. Uh, being able to provide the electricity that is needed by these cars. On the other hand, there are also new technologies that allow to use the batteries of the cars, like batteries for storage electricity in our houses or our offices, in the case that we have um, uh, PV panels or any other mediums to generate electricity. This is something that we are going to explore also in, in the in the project. And altogether, uh, we will uh, uh, study the scheduling and optimization of uh, this uh, charging of the electric vehicles. Uh, this is a um, SCA uh, staff exchange project, uh, and what we want to 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 do in, in the context of the project is to develop a, a framework to experiment in the different countries with the uh, electric vehicle uh, charging infrastructures uh, for that we are going to explore distributed intelligence uh, in vehicle to uh, communication vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure communications uh, what I have just said about the vehicle to grid, uh, smart grid optimization and prediction, and also uh, uh, charging uh, scheduling. There is one important point uh, for all the uh, electric vehicle users. Uh, I'm on the one side, <laughs> I'm one of them. And that is uh, uh, this the charging anxiety when you are driving and you are in a traffic jam and you don't know if you have enough. Uh, battery to arrive to the next point. So this is something that has to be solved if you really want the people to use these electric uh, cars. 
uh, we're going to develop five proof of concepts during during the project. Uh, uh, one uh, about deep learning uh, driving data analytics, another one on uh, LP1 communications, uh, one demonstration of federated learning, one on multi-layer vehicle to grid smart grid optimization, and the last one that will be a uh, software tool for the integration of all these uh, uh, proof of concepts uh, to allow the different groups to uh, make research with the data that is it's going to be obtained at the different uh, uh, facilities in the in the uh, groups that are participating in the in the project. Uh, we we are going to use the, the idea of digital twins that are virtual replicas that. Uh, allow us to simulate uh, the the use of the uh, electric vehicles and uh, with these virtual replicas our idea is to experiment different uh, uh, optimization techniques uh, uh, in in order to optimize uh, where the uh, charging station must be uh, located, uh, which power this uh, this charging station will need, and uh, to study all the possible uh, uh, complex interaction in 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 a virtual way because it, it is not possible in 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 any other in any other way. Well, uh, the consortium is. Uh, uh, composed by seven beneficiaries and eight associated partners. Uh, we have uh, partners in Canada and the United States, uh, Korea, uh, Japan, and also in in the UK. Um, we we have started with the with the secondments uh, from our laboratory. Uh, we uh, we have one secondment in Canada, another one in in Japan that is started on September. Uh, now I'm making a, a shorter uh, a secondment, but I will come back to Japan in uh, in next uh, next summer. And, and I have planned to to go also to to Canada and the and the states. And we have received in in our laboratory there in Malaga, and also in the companies that, that are located in Malaga, Softgrids and Themosa, that we have received also several comments from people from the from the UK. And uh, well, in in. In our case, uh, we are in the Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology here in Japan, in the laboratory of Toto Kenta Umebayashi that works on vehicle to uh, X uh, communications, and uh, we 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 have the the opportunity to work together during the these last two, uh, few months, and the the research we are doing is uh, promising. Um, uh, as a conclusion, I think that uh, this uh, type of projects is uh, really good for establishing new contacts. Uh, I, I knew uh, uh, Professor uh, Kenta Umevayasi uh, before, but I hadn't the opportunity to come to Japan and to stay here for a long, a longer period to 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 develop uh, uh, our research. Um, uh, the the point is they don't receive money from from the from from the European Union, but as far as I know, they have asked for money also in in in, in Japan, and they plan to to visit us in in the in the near future. Um, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, again, another great presentation about a, a project that's uh, collaborative between the EU and Japan. We hope to showcase more of these in the future, so please stay tuned. Any questions to our expert speakers today? I only see one in the Q&A box. Does a project always have to include non-academic institutions? I guess Perhaps that's a I question can... to Christine. Yeah. Yes, perhaps I can take this. No, they don't have to. So it's it can be either or. So if there are no non-academic institutions involved, 
then the secondments must be between Europe and non-European countries. So in case we are thinking of collaboration with Japan, it is perfectly feasible to have a consortium consisting only of universities and uh, some of them in Europe, some of them in, uh, in Japan. And um, uh, the uh, secondments then will be between Europe and Japan. I think that those who are seconded are researchers, but should the proposal include the plan of secondment of non-researchers such as administrative staff? Are there any cases in the projects presented today? Perhaps I will uh, give uh, then chance of, uh, to, to Teodora and Manuel to, to answer about their project. Are there seconded any uh, staff uh, that are not researchers, maybe administrative? But from my side, I can say that uh, if the non-researchers uh, are seconded, they still need to be actively involved in research activities. So it is, uh, it is uh, still necessary that also the administrative staff has a meaningful role in the research project that is being uh, implemented. Thank you. Uh, Tadora? Yeah, so at the point of uh, writing the proposal, we did not plan any administrative um, uh, secondments. We mostly focus on the researchers and on the uh, PhD students. Um, but as far as I understand, this could be changed during the project uh, implementation if we have the approval of the project officers. Thank you. And Manuel? No, we don't have any plan for administrative uh, staff, uh, only researchers. Maybe some technical support uh, staff, but we don't really know because they may help to configure uh, the some of the networks that and 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 that is can be made easier by by this type of stuff that from from researchers, but we we, we don't know yet. Maybe uh, while the questions are being uh, uh, written, yes. I just want to comment on the application process uh, that uh, I very briefly <clears throat> introduced. Uh, the application process is very similar to other parts of Horizon Europe meaning that the consortium will create this proposal in the funding and tenders portal, will fill in some administrative forms in the portal, but then the main part of the project is uh, presented as a PDF file with a very uh, a strict structure. Um, and uh, the evaluation criteria determine what has to be written and how. So they, uh, there are three main chapters in this application, uh, excellence, impact and implementation. So first of all, uh, the uh, proposal's scientific justification has to be uh, written under excellence and uh, how this will benefit the, the research field and then how exactly the work plan and the secondments look like. Um, yeah, I just want to encourage everybody uh, who is um, participating to keep trying and to keep improving their projects because, for example, in our case, we receive funding only after the third time we applied. So I think the important thing is just not to give up and to keep improving. And also to uh, to send your, your project to um, people that you know and you trust, like your colleagues, so they can give you some feedback how to improve it. So have like a view from somebody who is not involved in the writing. An excellent opportunity for me again to promote the national contact points. So myself in, in my country, Estonia, but there are national contact points for MSCA in each country in Europe and their contacts you can find on the funding and tenders portal as well as the project website. And they are there to provide you for free, uh, of course, in every case, uh, advice and help in, in writing these MSCA proposals. Thank you. We have uh, any, we have uh, one more question. Japanese institutions must bring their own budgets, but what is the attraction of this program for Japanese institutions? An excellent question indeed. Uh, Kristen? Yes, um, uh, the attraction is not additional money to the uh, Japanese institutions as, uh, as it is um, um, uh, as it is clear from the fact that they have to pay as they go. 
but uh, the, the attraction really is there because I think that MSCA uh, staff exchanges are an excellent way of establishing uh, collaboration with European uh, counterparts and uh, pave the way to uh, maybe other projects. We see that uh, a lot of these MSCA staff exchanges projects then lead on to other research collaboration, uh, both in uh, MSCA and other parts of Horizon Europe. And uh, of course, the main motivation is the joint uh, interest, uh, the research project itself. But I uh, think that perhaps Manuel and Teodora can explain uh, why their Japanese counterparts <laughs> um, agree to participate in these projects. Yeah, from my point of view, I think it's uh, uh, important uh, to 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 have enough time to prepare uh, new projects uh, for real for for looking for funding for a real large collaborative uh, projects. Uh, sometimes you don't have the the opportunity to have long meetings and to work together before presenting uh, 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 new projects. And I think it's a, a very good way of doing that. In, on the other side, I think that these uh, long stays uh, uh, are very good to understand uh, the way, for instance, in our case in the electric vehicles, uh, the way of uh, thinking about the electric vehicle in Japan is totally different from Europe and totally different from Canada. There are totally different use cases. And you don't really realize that until you arrive to the place and you are there to see it. There's another question. Do you know if um, the Japan Atomic Energy Agency is already involved in some projects? I have not specifically uh, looked for that, but uh, you are most welcome to go to the CORDIS website. You can also search there for uh, with the name of the organization and you will find all projects also funded uh, from other uh, Horizon Europe uh, parts where Japan um, is, is participating. So the CORDIS website has a very good uh, a search system. And uh, indeed, all the projects funded from Horizon Europe are listed there with their information, all the partners, the budget uh, publications, etc. So uh, this is uh, really a very good tool for, for learning what is, what is already happening and uh, maybe getting some inspiration. Yes, thank you. I have just sent the, the Cordis uh, portal page in the chat. So feel free to uh, click on that and uh, get um, further information on uh, what projects are, are currently ongoing and uh, which are actually about to commence uh, in the future. From my side, I really hope that uh, the idea of, of submitting a staff pick changes uh, project uh, uh, is is uh, getting rooted in your mind and uh, uh, if you are curious then the two next uh, info events uh, tomorrow the brokerage event where you can actually find some partners uh, but also this brokerage event starts with a small info session about the scheme and also the December information day by the European Commission will uh, give you more information, the opportunity to find partners, and uh, the unprecedentedly high success rate of the scheme uh, is also a great motivator, I hope. And uh, the calls will be open every year, similar calls, so you can, even if you fail the first time, you can resubmit the next year. Yeah, Thank yes. you very much. From my side, just encourage people to, to ask for this type of projects. I think they are a good opportunity for having uh, time for collaboration without uh, deadlines, uh, deliverables, and all the uh, uh, constraints that you have in a, a normal uh, European project. Uh, so uh, it is a different way of working. Definitely. Yeah, also just to encourage everyone to attend all the possible seminars organized by the Horizon Europe and also by the, um, by the, the national contact points, at least in Latvia, we regularly have them every year, where they explain in more details uh, and they give you some tips how to go about the project. And also don't be afraid to reach out to also people that you met on conferences or through 
through your other colleagues just to find um, to uh, to sort of extend your network and to find new partners. I hope that today's session was useful to our viewers and a special thanks to our speakers for dedicating their time to this webinar and uh, the audience for tuning in. Please join the brokerage event tomorrow and the info session on the 8th of December. For further information, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Line, LinkedIn, and our portal. And I wish you a wonderful day or night. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.